Hi, everyone. My name is Dmitry Kushnikov. I'm CTO at ManyChat. I've been with, with the company about, uh, about seven years, and we grow from the people of four to the 150 many chatters. Uh, during my joining company, I changed a lot of the titles. I started as backend engineers and head of engineering, and right now I'm CTO. But uh, of course, during this journey, I uh, uh, touch other functions of company, like uh, data analytics, like HR, and product, of course. Uh, it helped me to understand not only engineering and technologies, but also understand how the company structure affects all functions and how the company works as a whole. About ManyChat. ManyChat is a number one chat marketing platform. We transform how business and customers communicate in new age. We enable automation in popular messaging apps like Telegram, Instagram, Facebook Messenger, and WhatsApp. Uh, our product trusted by one million businesses, and we process one, more than one billion messages every month. It's very strong confirmation of our broad impact. We are official meta business partners, and we help a lot of businesses to innovate in our digital world. Uh, company was founded seven years ago in 2016, and ManyChat has grown in a global presence. Uh, right now, we have 150 people in our three hubs, New York, Yerevan, and Barcelona. Our growth and success is came from focusing on our product. It means that we not only create some cool tech things, but also we do something that very important for for our customers and users. I would like to thank you everyone here in audience. I would like to thank you everyone who will see us online and uh, who maybe will see my presentation uh, in recording. Um, let's talk a little about the topic. While preparing the presentation, I realized that the topic I wanted to talk about is slightly different from the original title. I will talk about the team responsibilities and team approach and why it's crucial for the business. Let's keep the discussion uh, of myths and realities in informal and by the questions. But before, uh, but before I'm going to deep dive, I just want to understand the audience here. Uh, please tell me uh, who is here develop the code, develop the software. Please raise a hand. Okay, thank you. And who is here who thinks that they uh, manage developers? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, and maybe any business owners or business representatives here? Okay, not not so much. Uh, I think that I really believe that everything that I'll share can be useful and maybe valuable for, for every one of you. So let's go. Our topic for today is how a team first approach help a company grow and evolve and survive. Based on our experience, I can trust and I can say that team first approach help company to pass through the many challenges more efficiently. When I talk about challenges, what is, what is this? This is uh, many that uh, companies uh, faced during the last few years. It's Company grows, product strategy pivoting, platforms changes, like uh, iOS 17, three, you know, I remember, new market opportunities. Of course, that headcount reduction, macro changes and recessions, the, uh, and pandemic and wars, and other and other. And why it's important? Uh, a few black swans already came, and we don't know how many is ahead. Companies are seeking the ways how to increase their stability in these changes, in these times. At ManyChat, we constantly grow and facing the challenges. And we learned how to think, how the thinking in teams 
help us to uh, process through these challenges. Teamwork culture is our core value, and team work, teams are the building blocks of the company, and we use it to scale the rise. We found our success through adaptability and want to share it. What exactly I'm going to talk about today? Um, we will look at the, what the team is from the what the team means in, from the perspective of many chat. I will tell you how the team first approach help in general and how it help us. And I will share a recipe uh, how we build and develop teams and how we support them from the organizational level. I want to start with a quote of the great person. This quote has been guide me through my whole my career and help both me and the company get where we are today. I want to touch on the topic of organizational design briefly. I think the Conway law is one of the most important basics in this field. It says any organization that designs and produce uh, that the design system will produce a design whose structure is a copy of the organization's communication structure. I can interpret uh, interpret this like this: uh, the organizational structure influences software architecture. The team structure is reflected in the product structure. Restricted interactions result of restricted restricted integration, and the team size and product scale are correlated. What it means? Teams split it into, into groups tend to produce products in the separate parts and models. The internal organization of the developer group directly influences product design and implementation. Poor communication between teams often result of poorly integrated system parts. I think, I think that most of you meet these things uh, during your experience. And the most important for us, moving from hierarchy to self-managing teams can result in more modular, adaptable product design, mirroring the dynamic and, f and flexible organization structure. At ManyChat, we actively use this law and its impl implications, and I want to tell, talk more about it. So, what is a team? Is our understanding. A team, in our view, is not a just a group of people who physically or virtually united, where everyone does their own task. A team is a many, mini organization with the, its own goal, both short term, like sprint goal, or long term, like OKR. Additionally, it's essential to consider the team size because the communication because the communication is limited and uh, it's uh, necessary to build a trust, it's impossible to build, to build it into large groups. Other factors that define our teams in longevity, we don't form the team for a specific uh, project. We build it for a long time. Dedic dedication. Each team member devoted for the 100 person of his time to work inside the team. Cross-functional, each team has a functional need, skills that they need to achieve the goals. And self-manage, the team, not the manager, responsible for the decisions how to work should be done. In summary, a team should be available to achieve goal or result. During our experience, we identified several profiles of team during our evolution. We figure out the stream aligned team for the maintains uh, developing uh, current customers and core use cases. We uh, figure out growth teams for fast experiments and working on optimization conversion funnels and customer journeys. And leading team, it's for the cases if we need to implement new strategic direction or start using new technology. Um, and how it looks like an example. And what team first approach means and uh, 
how we get benefits from it. The team first approach, team first seeking is our philosophy. We set scaling plans in terms of the teams. For example, if we need to uh, achieve some goal and we need uh, to align two teams in this direction, we think in this if, if we have teams for this or not. It's not important uh, how many people we work on this. It depends on their skills. When we launch no direction, we think which team is the better, not a people, not an individual. And in terms of performance, we firstly think uh, this team performs well, this team performs not well, let's help them. This is a huge, gigantic list of the benefits that we get from this approach. Uh, I split it in, into the strategic and tactics. Uh, it helps us to ensure pivots and adaptation, discover market opportunities, maintain extreme goals, uh, growth, and crisis navigation. And uh, in tactics, it's simple management, greater results. Uh, we get extreme ownership, uh, people maturity, who became a real business partners, partners. And also we get very interesting side effects. For example, um, we get a deep trust within the team and the cross company. We, our teams make uh, right and uh, faster, uh, so the, the, my right decision quickly and effectively. Uh, we, um, people stay highly motivated and understanding the business better. And of course, um, we decrease the time to market and uh, decrease the transactional cost. Next question, how we build our teams. Going back to the some theory, we use the Tuckman's model uh, and guide team from stage to stage. During forming and storming, we use team building practice like team kickoff, provide support. Uh, we uh, use dedicated coach, Akas Scrum Master, and ensure team safety and re reduce workload. We don't hire people from the market for new teams. We engage in methodis, Akka team, team split. So it means when we we starting to hire people in the current team, and when uh, they ready, they uh, we split them into teams to share culture and expertise. During the norming and performing, we focus on team interaction through the coaching. Again, we use Scrum Masters. We enhance collaborative works on task. We, we develop open communication and uh, uh, teach team to give a feedback. And of course, we uh, use tools that are employed for individuals, but on the team level, like team expectation. Most businesses stop on norming, but we need performing. And how we manage this team? Um, we don't have a managers inside teams, no team leads. Project management is a team responsibility. And uh, what we uh, develop informal dedicated leadership. People managers are out of team. They focus on development and growth of individuals. And we provide inclusivity. That means that we don't have a one growth, no standard growth plan. We look for unique development plans for every person. <laughs> As one well-known preacher in our circle once said, it doesn't make sense to hire smart people and tell them what to do. We hire smart people so they can tell us what to do. Hire professional, set a goal and boundaries, and step back. It's expensive and it's scary, but, it's the, but the profit is higher. You ask me, <laughs> what do managers do? Our managers practice goal C, uh, set and monitor team expectations, 
uh, ensure gross environment for the teams, implement optimization goals, and restrict cognitive load. Uh, my first advice to the manager, manager, step back and don't interfere. And how we support our teams across the entire organization. Team is not just the most important thing. We use a system thinking for this approach. A system is a set of interconnected entities. And it acts as a single whole. We work with team as a system. We develop uh, and improve the entire system, not optimizing. We don't utilize resources. It just means that if, uh, for example, we don't need such developer for the sprint, he's still working in team and just learning, uh, uh, get new knowledge, but we don't switch him to another project. We um, enhance interactions and interdependencies. We improve team adaptability and stability, and we're trying to reach emergence. <laughs> emergence, not emergency, uh, is a special creativity energy, innovative solutions, and unique process that arise from the interaction of team members, but could not, that, that which could not occur when each of them works separately. A team is a system. We improve the system, not just individuals. Enhancing individual people without improving team's work leads to the breakdown of the system. I'd like to talk a little about coaching especially. As I mentioned before, many companies start, stop at the norming stage, but it's not enough for us. We know that high-performing teams more much effective and than average ones. And we invest into this. To achieve performing, we coach teams. Uh, that's the list of the practices we do uh, for this. Overall, if you choose a team-first approach, you should continually nurture team dynamics to maintain high performance. I think it's very important when a speaker from the practical field comes with the life hacks, practices, recipes, tested in reality. And I try to create a recipe for you which will help you to boost your team. Um, first of all, ensure norming and provide your team psychological safety environment ensure trust be bef between people in team. Set ambitious goal and develop first team first mindset. Uh, then outline team accountability and responsibility. Outline expectation and send team level performance management. Provide them mentoring and coaching, organize reflection, feedback process, ensure facilitating and retrospective of what of the, the work. And uh, of course, raise the bar continually, but sustainable. Uh, and set up cross-team collaboration. That's very important for the whole company. It sounds beautiful and simple before, isn't it? But of course, there are some flies in ointment. Um, any approach has some few trade-offs, and uh, our two. First of all, it's a long-run game. We started this movement only when we understand our product market fit, because forming team can take months. It doesn't fit everyone. Uh, to ability to play in team is a skill that needs to be developed. Hiring is hard because people from the market are not used, 
used in process with our team leads, project managers, etc. And it's extremely hard because communication skill is very important for our developers. Um, the lack of these skills is uh, the most important, uh, the very popular um, reason of rejection of the easy stages of hiring. Um, adoption of newbies take a long, long time for us. Even senior person uh, take, uh, it can take months to adapt when joining a company. And replacement is expensive. And a few things you need to monitor if you decided to implement this approach. Uh, first of all, uh, trust can have a reserve, uh, reverse effect. Uh, sometimes it uh, takes work to fire someone for low performance because of he, can, he or she can, they can find a place in a team. So it's necessary to pop the happy bubble. Contribution and ownership, it's also very important to monitor. You need to prevent your teams of building guardrails from other contributors. And uh, team dynamic and toxicity, you need to remove people who are not unsuitable for the teamwork. Now let's try to gather everything I said into the conclusions. A team is a living organism that evolves and adapts. It needs a common goal aligned with the company strategic objectives, while psychological safety and informal leadership enhance collaboration and innovation. The right team is growing product com in growing product companies are the base element of scaling, spreading the corporate culture and expertise, the drive innovation and the generation of new ideas. Um, having strong teams in times of crisis allows the company to better and faster adapt to changes. Going through difficult stages like staff reduction, changing strategy or tactics. To build such teams, it's worth using this, this systematic approach, like system thinking. As well as adapting standard management tools to the team level. Here I gather some links to the books, article, and resources that helped me to prepare this presentation and which I study and continue to study in my work on the company structure. Exciting, teams, exciting times ahead. Uh, in the world of technology, is rapidly um, uh, came to the what we want, we many chat want to stay ahead of innovation. Uh, and uh, I, I see that our solution become a very significant part of everyday life of the businesses and customers. And I'm looking forward to talk more about these ideas I shared today. Uh, Please come to me and let's, with any questions, suggestions, and feedback. Sharing my experience and ideas move us forward. And I always, and I always open to hearing from you any views and your views and thoughts. So thank you for your attention and let's keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you, Dmitry. Let me use my authority and ask the first question. Uh, actually, I want to ask uh, your approach of building the team. Uh, it was a reaction to some inefficiency in your company when you started growing, or you built it from the scratch, from the moment when it was only four of you? Um, it's a good question. Yeah, it was a reaction, but we started a long time ago. We started on the second year of uh, our company. Uh, but it was a reaction of uh, increased time to market. So it was about uh, 20 people in the company when we started this approach, and uh, we nurtured it for the five years. Hmm. Great. Guys, 
Questions? Uh, hi. Uh, did I get it right that you don't have uh, dedicated product managers and dev managers, uh, architects? Uh, no, we have a we have a product managers, and as I showed, uh, they are part of the team, and they work uh, work together as a usual team team member. Uh, we have an engineering managers, but uh, as I said, they focus on the optimization system as a whole. They focus on hiring, and uh, they help uh, individuals to grow. And if they see any issues, they can highlight the team that. Yeah, hi. This, uh, this is some issue. I call it go see uh, uh, practice. So they help the team to understand the issue and help to fix it. And uh, how do you act on people who doesn't want to take uh, huge responsibilities? Like I'm kind of I'm uh, joined just to code. I'm a good coder, uh, okay, but I yeah. don't want all this stuff. Yeah, the idea is not to hire these people. Uh, <laughs> good approach. <laughs> Hello, Dmitry. Yeah. Thank you very much for the presentation. The approach sounds super healthy. And uh, I have the feeling like I, listen, I was listening to some very nice management podcast. But uh, may I challenge a little bit of course. Uh, this uh, approach? Because in my practice, I do face with, uh, you know, open the gate, close the gate, open the gate, close the gate approach. I mean, uh, some ad hoc challenges or ad hoc opportunities which we need to react somehow as a management team, as um, um, employees, and so on and so far. So how do you deal with this, keeping in mind that the environment right now is quite unpredictable <laughs> that yeah. you live in? Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, can you help me maybe with some examples? But uh, the Because my answer is uh, uh, we, the idea is that we as a team and as a company ready to any new challenges. And we had it um, by design and as practice. So um, all the things that um, I uh, showed as a challenges is as a, what we passed during, f f during the last uh, three years. So relocation, uh, pandemic, uh, a lot of the strategy, strategy pivots and everything and extreme growth and uh, stuff reduction everything we pass and we still on the same uh, we are very strong and solid team yeah that's very impressive just for me to learn probably yeah sometimes it's quite hard to stick to the initial plan like you have a plan but then yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. So, so yeah, it's always. It's not about. It's not about the plan. It's just about that the idea, that the structure, and uh, how you design it help you to adapt to any any changes, uh, any changes. But, but we don't know what we will be ahead. But right now, I can tell that everything that we had before we passed with success. Impressive. Thank you. More question, guys? Ah, yeah, sorry. One, one thing that after the, if you would just want to, I'm CTO, you know, that I'm uh, face of the company. Here in the south is our uh, engineering lead and uh, one, uh, and uh, <laughs> a few engineering managers, you can ask him how they, how they work inside the teams and outside the team, what they do and how they operate everything. They, uh, hi. Uh, so first of all, thank you for the for the presentation. Uh, my my question is more related to the. Um, th there was there was a, a phrase there regarding new teams that when you want to create new teams, you don't uh, directly hire new people. You do basically a mitosis process where you you split the teams. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. Uh, we what we do. So we understand on, on the same level, we understand that we need to invest more into some, some um, direction on some, something. And uh, we start, uh, we choose a team that will be 
that is responsible for this direction right now. And we start hire people in this team and help the start, uh, pe uh, people to adapt within this team. And on the one of the stage, maybe when a team uh, became a size of that we will be ready to split, we meet us it into the two teams and uh, we, uh, I told about that informal leadership and usually this informal leadership, informal leaders, they split into the two teams and they can uh, they continue uh, to work in separate teams. But after this split, the team, mm, uh, these teams start operated on really high level. They help each other, they know each other, they use the processes. Yes, they may choose a different ways how to develop, but overall they have the same the same ways of working, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. So basically what we what you do is you just take new joiners and before you split you first let them yeah. integrate in the in the team, in the ways yeah. of working of the team. Yeah, and yeah. Then usually it's take from three to six months just for example. Okay, yeah. But uh my question was more on the um on the reaction side because it's I, I believe uh team splitting is always difficult. At least for for uh, the, yeah. the team members and from and your experience, how hard is it to convince people to... Yeah, <laughs> my, my question is very easy. We need to, to explain to team why, they need, why we need it. We go to team and tell, guys, uh, see, what's the issue? Your direction is grow. You see the metrics, you see the revenue, you see everything. We need to invest more. And they understand, they see roadmap, they understand what they need to grow. And they understand, oh, yeah, and we tell them. Uh, we are ready to invest more in this direction and they uh, support us and so I understand why they need to hire more people and and teach them and why they need to split yeah you make you make them part of the process basically yeah right of course of the without, them, without them it doesn't yeah work. it doesn't yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so thank you uh, so as I get your teams are really deeply in, involved in a business and they're uh, connected to each business domain in, in which you're operating? Uh, mm, yeah, and we're trying to connect them to whole business and uh, but yeah, most they very deep in the very specific domain but we're trying to keep them uh, uh, in touch also with a uh, whole business. So all business metrics shared within the company and everyone can understand everything with it from any perspective. So they're really close to the business and developers communicate with business owners and business people. Yeah, as well. if they need and if they want and they did do this. Hmm. That's really great. First, thank you for your presentation. Maybe more a generic question. As a CTO, you always have to deal with different problems and challenges. And sometimes you don't have knowledge or skills how to resolve them. So maybe what is your plan for next year uh, to learn new, new skills, new areas into what you would like to deep dive? Um, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's a really interesting question, but uh, uh, I don't know what will be ahead. And uh, the main skill I'm trying to develop myself every time is be ready to adapt a new knowledge and uh, one of the way is how I did it I do a lot of networking with the people uh, from the companies that heard us as a larger than us and ask them about the challenges they had right now and uh, we they told me about about it and I understand what will be ahead. One more question from the rear. Uh, considering developer manager ratio, how many people are there tasked with fostering this environment and working kind of on a meta level, not in the teams but for the teams? I think it's not it's not such big, but um, overall, I think that uh, the totally the number of people that outside of team is the same like in hierarchical structure, but they organize different. So we have a scrum master uh, uh, 
mm, Scrum Master's team, Scrum Master Institute, as I told it. And it works on uh, another perspective of everything. So he, they observe the system from the, another point of view and they help to, uh, to support the system. But as I told, the idea is that the high performance team is not twice, not three times more effectively, but re really, really much times effectively. And uh, it's cost slightly more, but the really result is highly more. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, Sorry. Do you think there is uh, a lower and upper limit to the size of organization which can struck, uh, which can work in this way? Uh, yeah, I think that I know this number is Dunbar number. It's about 150 people. So after this, uh, this is one of my challenge uh, for the next uh, few years: how to uh, to organize everything uh, for the for the next stage. Yeah, because uh, you know that after 150 people, it's how to develop trust and uh, uh, communication. So right now I, we are in, in the uh, start, starting to, un to understand the challenges and trying to develop it. Cool, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Dmitry.